Hey, hi. John Mitchell. Jonathan, Jonathan Crombie. And uh, we're making our documentary, Waiting for Ishtar. And we were just kind of talking about things we could share because yeah. Ishtar, Ishtar is about two inept uh, singer-songwriters trying to make it in show business. And then looking back at our process of making this documentary. When we started out, we, we had our own bumbling ways. Yeah, much like the... The Chuck and Lyle of documentary. The Chuck and Lyle of documentary filmmakers. Yes. Um, and yeah, early on in the process, we were making this film about Ishtar, and we found out Elaine May was going to be in New York doing a screening of Ishtar, uh, and was going to have an interview where Mike Nichols was going to ask her questions after the after the screening about the film. So mm -hmm. we decided to uh, take your father's mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. drive down, camera in tow, mm -hmm. in hopes of actually getting an interview with with Elaine May. With Elaine May, that's right. That was the original purpose. So we took the camera into the uh, screening with us, but. Where we were sitting was there was we were packed with all these people around us. Yeah, uh, there was like Charles Grodin and Phil Donahue and Marlo mm -hmm. Thomas and, and Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman was there, and and so I had the camera. I was trying to kind of sneak it up over the chair in front of me, underneath my coat. Yeah, over the chair. I couldn't see what I was filming because you couldn't look through the viewfinder because it was too obvious. So it was trying to frame <laughs> Elaine May <laughs> without looking. That's what I remember. So I think if you catch there's one. I think there's a clip, too, where it's like she and Mike Nichols are talking, and it kind of starts on the top, like from here up, and then just starts to drift <laughs> up, <laughs> and goes up to the curtains. So cut to after. Afterwards, uh, as we're filing out, we were leaving the building, and there was, and you were going to try to I was gonna, get Elaine May. Yeah, I was going to try and approach Elaine May. I was going to walk up to her and, and tell her what we were doing and ask her if she would speak to us on camera. Um, and so she was with all, like, it was, it was literally like Marla Thomas and like <laughs> her, her friends all around her and I chickened out. So, but the saving grace was going to be, uh, Charles Grodin was exiting as we were leaving. And yeah. so I decided, okay, I have to just screw up my courage. I, I don't know if we're ever going to get anyone from Ishtar involved in this or saying anything to us. And so I introduced myself. I told him what we were doing and I said, would you please say something about Ishtar on camera? And he just was like, now, okay, well, how quickly can you get the camera? So I signaled Jonathan, who came right over. <laughs> came right over, yeah. brought the camera out. Yeah. He yeah. Said, it was sort of like, go! He just he basically just said that there are movies that are too hip for the room. Yeah. And uh, Ishtar was one of those movies. It was just too hip for the room. I can't remember what else he said. It was quite short. And off he went. Yeah. So we got, we got this interview with Charles Grodin, quick interview with Charles Grodin, really excited, mm -hmm. went home, checked the footage, realized something had gone yeah. wrong. Yeah. Um, and, uh, couldn't, couldn't find it. Yeah. The next day we, we went out for coffee. We were on, no, we were on our way back. That's we were, right. We were on our way, we had slinking our way slinking back. back to Toronto with nothing. And we stopped at a McDonald's in New Jersey and I decided to get the camera out. And as Jonathan's penance we had, I decided I had to, to ask him what had happened. So we came, we saw the show last night uh -huh. and, uh, our plan was to try and interview Elaine May, and we got Charles Grodin on tape, but we had we had some mishaps, Jonathan. What happened? I don't understand. We got this great interview of um, Charles Grodin, and then maybe you took the camera and you started fiddling with some of the buttons and rewinding and I raising things, and like, then it was gone, and I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It was gone? What what, what was gone? I don't know what you did to the camera. It was, um, <laughs> I forgot to press a button, <laughs> a very important button. Did that button start with an R? R-E-C. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, yeah, no, that one. <laughs> Record. <laughs> yeah, that one. The magic button. <laughs> so we got, so basically we just held the camera up to Charles Grodin <laughs> and he talked to us and nothing was going on. <laughs> just... <laughs> nothing. That's probably why he talked to us because he realized... Yeah, there's no red light. Nothing at stake. <laughs> so, um, so that was the, what, the, that was the Charles Grodin gaffe. Yeah. And, uh, but, but actually... Because of that, we managed to set up another interview with Charles Grodin, yes. which was a great interview, which you can watch yes. uh, right here. Hmm.